This video breaks down why the Golden State Warriors are even more loaded than we thought. The three other times in franchise history that the Warriors have won 16 of their first 18 games, they reach the NBA Finals. Overcoming a 19-point deficit, Juan Toscano Anderson, Gary Payton II, Otto Porter Jr., and Andrew Wiggins combined for 50 points on 20 for 37 shooting from the fields in Golden State's win against Philly. Those four players are behind both Steph and Jordan Poole in terms of offensive responsibility, but they helped carry a brunt of the scoring load. Here's how the team's secret weapon in JCA, along with very under-the-radar players, have contributed to the Warriors' 16-2 start, entering their game against Rip City tonight. Before continuing, only 19.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so help the channel reach 50k by subscribing if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The Mexican-American Juan Toscano Anderson went undrafted back in 2015 after spending four years at Marquette University. From there, JTA went to play professionally in Mexico and Venezuela, winning two championships in his home country's basketball league. In 2019, Toscano was signed by Golden State's G League team, the Santa Cruz Warriors. On February 6th of 2020, JTA signed a three-year deal with the Warriors, scoring 16 points against the Pelicans in his first week in the NBA. The Warriors released Juan on December 19th of 2020, but re-signed him to a two-way contract three days later. After proving his worth with his passing, hustle, and valuable defense, JTA's two-way contract was converted to a full-time NBA contract on May 13th. Toscano Anderson more than displayed that he belonged in the NBA, but more importantly, he showed Steve Kerr that he fit right in with the Warriors' complex offensive system. His play during his 21 minutes in his sophomore year garnered him a well-deserved guaranteed contract to the tune of two years at the 1.7 million minimum, which secured his place for at least another season. And this is a dream come true for Juan because he was born in Oakland, so he's playing for the team he grew up rooting for. Last season, Toscano Anderson stood out the most among Golden State's role players, was largely because he wasn't lost on both ends of the floor, like most of the supporting cast was. JTA was capable of working off Curry's gravity. Anderson's toughness and overall IQ resembles that of Draymond Green's. He's got a sharp passing vision, and he can switch up and down the positional spectrum. The former two-time Mexican League All-Star and Mexican League MVP provides energy that knows no bounds. He can even shoot the ball, showing flashes of spacing equity, a commodity that's much needed in the Warriors' space and pace system with tons of off-ball screens leading to three-pointers. With the additions of veterans such as Otto Porter Jr. and Nemanja Bielitsa, the return of Andre Iguodala, the emergence of a fellow G League talent in Gary Payton II, Toscano Anderson has been moved to the back of the bench which would have a damaging effect on most players' egos, but that hasn't been the case with Toscano. He's averaging close to 15 minutes this season, which is five less than he received in his rookie and sophomore years. As a result of limited minutes and therefore limited touches, some of his numbers have declined. Shooting splits of 58-40-71 last year have turned into 50-33-82, this season. His rebounding has been cut off by half from 4.4 to 2.5 per game. His assists have declined slightly from 2.8 to 2.2 per game. His distance shooting hasn't gotten off to an amazing opening start as he's only made 8 of 24 three-point shots. That may be indicative of the fact that Juan's 40.2% clip last season may have been an anomaly. Having said that, Toscano Anderson's value and the reason he's a part of the number one seeded team in basketball in the first place has never been solely based on the raw numbers. Whenever Steve Kerr calls his number, JTA's presence is instantly felt and for every bit of playing time he gets, you can tell Juan's out there on the floor. That's something you can't say about the majority of NBA players who have their moments of looking invisible. For Toscano Anderson, his impact is immediately profound. Versus the Philadelphia 76ers, who dropped a fat 61 points in the first half against a lazy Golden State defense and a predictable offense, Toscano Anderson was the eighth man off the bench and he delivered. Toscano's contributions were a shot in the arm to a team that didn't have its usual two-way sharpness to begin the game. 
Taiwan gave lucidity to the Dubs offensive attack whenever they needed it, which was a lot against the Sixers. Where there were gaps to be filled, JTA filled them seamlessly. He thrived as a scorer on the margins, feeding off Curry's gravitational pull on fake handoffs or slipping wide down screens for Jordan Poole. Toscano Anderson's value as a sneak scoring threat, made plausible by the Sixers putting the slower Andre Drummond on him, made a significant difference. Drummond was hard pressed to defend the fake handoff, while a momentary lapse in taking stock of where his man is results in Toscano Anderson sneaking behind and getting the N1. His offensive hustle is arguably the most eye-catching aspect of Juan's performance. Toscano Anderson sprints in transition as he knows the value of taking advantage of a non-set defense. With his versatility and mobility being key advantages over opponents with more traditional lineups with traditional bigs, JTA knows he has a leg up in terms of speed. Defenses treating him as a minimal threat in the half court are also victimized by his presence and energy, personified through explosive putback dunks, as you saw in the first clip of this video. While scoring is a marginal but welcomed aspect of his game, Toscano Anderson's ability to pass and serve as a play connector is the skill that makes him a perfect cog for this particular machinery. Just like Green and Iguodala, he is an extension of the coach's will, whose tactics and game plan are made possible through Toscano Anderson's presence on the floor. Toscano distributes the ball with a deft touch, he whips passes in transition, he makes sound decisions in the short roll, but from a technical and schematic perspective, his most impressive passes were from the low post, finding cutters in the Warriors' bread and butter modified split action. JTA has played 250 minutes this season, 110 of which were with Curry. During those minutes, lineups involving the duo are outscoring opponents by nearly 17 points per 100 possessions. His ability to replicate what the likes of Green and Iguodala can do, execute dribble handoffs, finding Curry on dive cuts or down screens in split action, makes Toscano an organic fit beside Curry. Perhaps the most important of all, Toscano Anderson is rarely compromised defensively. Schematic awareness and basic understanding of team concepts and being able to execute them at a level that is required to maintain the best defense in the league is something that's in his wheelhouse. But the little things he does on defense are also quite apparent. He saves possessions and prevents what would be otherwise surefire scoring trips by opponents into successful stops. The beauty of his defense is seeing the tangibility of his intangibles. Seeing Toscano Anderson being demoted to a virtual 10th or 11th man off the bench may be jarring for some, especially with just how much of a fit he is for this team, schematically and culturally. But the fact that a player with his skill is a deep bench option, that's a massive luxury for Steve Kerr. As for Toscano Anderson, he continues to take his situation in stride, knowing that when his number's called, his minutes on the floor will most certainly be of quality. Quote, I'm just being a professional. Like I said before, I'm a grown ass man and things aren't always going to go my way or the way that I want them to and life is about how you respond to different situations, adversity, whatever you want to call it. I just always try to be the best responder to situations. I don't really care about minutes, whether I played this day or that day. Yes, everybody wants to play more, but all you can do is control what you can control and approach the situation in the right way." End quote. We just spent a ton of time breaking down Juan Toscano because I hadn't talked about any of his game in prior videos. Conversely, I've broken down the impact of Gary Payton II in a few of my other recent Warrior videos, but let's go over how GP2 has been playing recently, along with some other talent outside of the Warriors' top three most valuable players. Dubs Nation has fallen in love with the lateral quickness and instincts defensively from Gary Payton II. His elite bunnies when throwing down posters don't hurt his likability either. Peyton battled Avery Bradley, who was cut and later signed by the Lakers to earn the 15th and final roster spot. In 2021-22, Peyton's only a few spots behind his teammate Belly to rank number 18 among all NBA players in plus-minus. Who would have thought the Warriors would be getting this type of impact from their 15th man? Otto Porter Jr.'s had seven games already in this young season where he scored at least eight points on over 50% shooting. Porter Jr. has been the perfect option on the wing next to Stephen Curry, with the ability to catch passes off pin downs, working away from the ball, and make plays by either letting it fly with a catch and shoot or a one dribble pull up after baiting his defender. 
What an amazing cop by Bob Myers this past summer, picking up a lengthy wing player who's reinvigorated his prime days as an elite 3 and D player next to John Wall and Bradley Beal. Otto's certainly found a home in San Francisco after struggling for the last few years with injuries. Quickly, we'll touch on Air Canada. Andrew Wiggins just broke Danny Green's ankles as a part of a 19 piece against the Philadelphia 76ers where he shot 7 for 13 from the field. Wiggins has been doing an outstanding job filling the Harrison Barnes type role as the primary option at small forward. Andrew's shooting a career high 49.6% from the field so far this season. Early in his career, even last season with the dubs, Wiggins has always been asked to produce like a number one or number two guy, but as mainly this squad's number four scoring option and at times number three guy, Andrew's in the perfect situation for his comfortability and playing style. It's been great to see the former number one pick and my fellow Toronto born man show out for the best team in the league in the Bay. Given I haven't even mentioned Kevon Looney, who has 99 hands up front, the floater expert, and another solid 3 and D guy in Damian Lee, as well as Professor Big Shots Nemanja Bjelica, even Andre Iguodala, who still has a decent amount left, among several other role players, you can see why this dubs team is even more scary than they seem on the surface. With Steve Kerr's brilliant offensive sets featuring a heavy dose of horns, elevator screening, and tons of cuts to the basket off the ball, the endless options that Golden State has in their personnel are in good hands with a stellar coaching staff. What's the most underrated part of the Warriors in your opinion? Best answer gets next video shoutout. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shoutout goes to Boston Haltane, who says, The best celebration for me all time is the MJ shrug. How iconic that shrug became is legendary, also Matumbo's finger wag. His blocks were crazy and the celebration was just as good, if not better. Thanks for every great answer. This was D-Flow, hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.